Today I'm going to be making homemade chicken and dumplings by a request from my sweet daughter, Susan Gilstrap. Um, this recipe that I'm going by to make these dumplings was handed down to me from my sweet aunt, Pearl Vanderford Crocker, many, many years ago. And I've treasured this because it's real simple to make and another recipe that's time consuming. So this morning I started when I get, right after I got up and I took a, I went to the grocery store yesterday and I got a whole fryer chicken, not a hen, a whole fryer chicken. It's just a smaller, it's uh, but anyway, you use that and you wash it real good, just like if it was a little baby, wash everything on it. And sometimes it has little uh, pouches of gizzards, liver, and all that, ugh, all that stuff that's up inside of the chicken. Make sure you take that out. Make sure you take that out. Okay, once you get it washed and all, I have a big boiler right here. About this size is what I use because you want to get, use all the broth from the chicken. So this morning about 9.30, I put on that whole fryer and I let it uh, cook in this pot. I put it in there and I covered it up with water and you want to have more, a lot more water than you do chicken. You get it to boiling to start with and then once it starts boiling you can cut it down to medium. And so it cooked from about 9.30ish until about 3 o'clock today, real slow. And I've got some rich stock and so I, I'm keeping it on warm right now until I get my dumplings rolled out. Okay, um, after the chicken cooked I took this little spoon right here and I dipped it out into a pan and I got two big pans, took it over to the table and I took the chicken and I boned it, skinned it, and pulled all the yucky things off of it and got rid of all that, believe me, because you don't want to eat that. And this is the results of that whole chicken. And you put it in a bowl to use after you get your dumplings made. So let's get started on making the dumplings. The recipe calls for four cups of all-purpose plain flour. And of course, I'm a fan of the white lily flour. So this one, instead, unlike the one I use for my biscuits, this one is the plain. If you use the self-rising flour, you're going to have a pot full of gravy. Because believe me, I've done it before in the beginning when I was learning how to make this. So you use the plain flour and you get four cups of that and you pour all that into a bowl. Take your whisk and just go around make sure there's no big lumps in it. Okay, you t um, I took two cups of broth out of that pot right there, and it doesn't have anything in it. It's just a rich broth, and what you're going to do, I'm going to put about one and a half cups of this into the flour. This is kind of warm, so I'm starting off with the broth to start with, and I'm going to leave about a half a cup in there. Okay, you take a spoon and you, you can mix this. You mix the broth into the flour. I saw the two ingredients is all it is. And it's going to make kind of like a gooey ball. I use a spoon to start with and then after you get it um, mixed up you can start using forming it into a ball just like a ball of bread dough you can use your hands then it cools down the broth once you mix it with the flour 
there's one other ingredient that I'm going to add, and that is one beaten egg. And I've already put this in this bowl and beat the egg real well. So I'm going to add that to the mixture. That's the only three ingredients that you use for your dumplings. So I take my spoon again and mix all this stuff as best that you can with the spoon. And then when you get where you get it all together, you can start using your hand. This helps get all the liquid into the flour mixture. And it's not quite as messy if you do it this way. This is a southern dish that you can tell if you're from the south if you love chicken and dumplings. If you're not, then well, this is just a big treat for you because it's some of the best food that you can eat. Okay, it looks like my dough is good. Because I can handle it good. It looks like something you'd make a pizza crust with. So what you do next is you take, uh, I love to use parchment paper, and you flour the dough, the dough board, or either the parchment paper. Get it coated real well. And then use your dough and put it right there in the middle of it. And you can press it down. Now, I'm not real good with the rolling pin, but you do need to use a rolling pin when you're making dumplings. You want to roll these dumplings out as thin as you can get them. If you don't, you will have um, clumps of dough in your chicken and dumplings, and you don't want that. That turns a lot of people off. The doughier, the clumpier it is, that is not what you want. You want real thin, kind of like an egg noodle. Real thin. Not thin enough that you could read a newspaper through, but thin. Okay. Looks like I got about half the dough like I want it. By the time I get good at using the rolling pan, I've already got it in the thickness I want. Okay, I'm going to push this aside. I should have got my knife out before I started, but that's okay. I'm going to get a sharp knife. And I'm going to cut my broth up on medium heat and let it get real hot. It's already warm, but okay, from the part I've been rolling out. You just start cutting. And I like to make them in little small strips. You know how the egg noodles look when you go to the grocery store and get a bag of egg noodles. You can, whichever, ever how wide you want to use them is what you need to cut them. No certain way. But Mine looks like it's maybe about a half inch to a three-fourths of an inch wide. Okay, once you get them all cut this direction, you start cutting them this way. Okay, I'm going to take these right now and start dropping them into the broth. And the, the broth is barely, looks like barely boiling a little. It's bubbling. So you start dropping them in there. And they, if you drop them separate like that, they will not stick. You're going to cook your dum dumplings first. You keep your chicken set aside. You don't add your chicken until all the dumplings are cooked. This is the last little bit of my dumplings. I've used every bit of it. So I'm putting the last little bit, the little thin squares. Take my wooden spoon and I'm going to stir around in the pot. They looking good. The broth is getting thicker. 
I'm gonna let once once you get all the dumplings in, you you can cook them slow for probably about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna cut it down to medium. All right, I have a whole pot full of chicken and dumplings. Getting ready to add the chicken. But first, I'm gonna put about almost a half a stick of butter. And that's for flavor. And I'm gonna put a little bit of pepper around the top. Okay, after you put the chicken in the, in the dumplings and mix it with the dumplings, the broth, the butter, a little bit of pepper, you're gonna add a little bit of milk. And today I've got carnation milk, but you can use either carnation or pet milk. And just put enough in it to give it a little color. It makes it creamier looking is all that's for. You don't, it's not necessary, but it gives it a little creamy look. So that's why I use that. Okay, looks like it's all mixed up. So I'm gonna start adding the chicken to the dumplings and you just pour it over into there. And just mix it up and you've got a delicious pot full of chicken and dumplings. Hope everyone enjoyed this today and I will see you later for the end product. Well I hope you've enjoyed the chicken and dumplings video today and if you add a few vegetables and things to it this is what you have. Until next time enjoy. I hope you get to use the recipe because you'll really love it. Bye-bye.